what transpired yesterday in Kibra exactly what has been hovering around and of course it's two days to the by election at Kibra of course and we'll be looking at these and much more as we get to have a look at our at topic of the day that is the mantle battle that is is, this, is it 2022 question between the Kibra residents and of course the nationwide well Two days to the D-Day for the hotly contested seat, that is the Kibra constituency, the Jubilee, ODM and ANC party leaders have been traversing the constituency in the bid to woo voters to vote for their respective candidates ahead of the 7th of November by election. The mini poll has apparently attracted attention from Nairobians and of course nationally turning out to be a battle between the three houses. The big question is, is this a question of the mantle battle? Is it a presidential question? as it has raised so much concern nationwide this morning to help us dis discuss this and much more. I'm joined by three gentlemen, and it's great to have all of you. Let me begin with you, of course. Right next to me is Don Anaclet, who is the Kibra MP, of course, candidate and Secretary General of Movement for Political Accountability. Thank you. Karibu sana. Thank it's you, nice sir. to have you. Thank you so much. All right, right next to him, it's uh, Muthira Karriera, who is the former Deputy Presidential Candidate. Thank you very much for having me yet again. Mm -hmm. And... The youth, as you always say here, must be involved in politics yes. because without engagement, we are not going to get value right. for even being citizens in this country. All right, those are his sentiments as he begins. And then right next to me, we have Gunjiri Karioki, who is a young man and really vibrant <laughs> in these things. He's a public policy analyst at Policy Exchange Kenya. Yes, Asante Sana. And uh, today we're going to unwind everything. All right. Yes. Let's get this done. The Kibra by-election, it's two days remaining. And we have seen so much that has been happening. IABC is there. The candidates are there, the 24 of them. And also we have the residents. Are we, or rather is the constituency ready for this by-election? Let me begin with you, Ngojiri. Yes, of course, the, it is all system go for Kibra by-election. And as you have seen, just yesterday, political parties were capitalizing on the time that is remaining to make sure that they are able to maybe twist the undecided voters. But of course, you look at the Kibra campaigns and the rush and the energy that has been invested in that constituency. Then you see the bigger picture of what we call, number one, the agon of political satire, two, right. the political reality in the Kenyan politics mm -hmm. and the political party politics, whereby we say that political parties act as the main sieve that is able to present candidates that the people of Kenya can be able now to, 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 to choose from. Then we have an opportunity as Kenyans now to be able to gauge what the 2022 elections will be like. Right. And for me, this is an acute angle for the whole other uh, reflex of uh, 2022. So, so it's for you, it's a reflection of what? Or yes. rather, let's call it a dress rehearsal? It, it, of course it is, because mm -hmm. as you can see, both mm -hmm. the Jubilee Party and the ODM Party, which are the main horses in this race, have invested so much time, resources, and you'll even see uh, you, even the, 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 the deputy party leader of Jubilee and the party leader of ODM exchanging words in political rallies. Let's so make that something one tells clear. you. Would you let's make yes. something clear. Yes. You said the political leaders yes. of both parties. Yes. Who has not been seen on the ground? The, the, I said the deputy party leader, All right. who of course has mm -hmm. naturally inherited the political uh, functions of the party because of course President Uhuru Kenyatta is in his final term so naturally mm -hmm. it is open for the deputy party leader of Jubilee to inherit that political capital and right. so you will expect that anything political because he's the guy who will navigate the party towards 2022 and everything the party does Dogs at the doorstep. We so will be discussing that. Yes. About Ruto in 2022. We'll be having a look at that later on because it's still a question of debate. Yes. Whether because Jubilee, we are not so sure that it's still standing strong. Okay. We'll be coming back. But before I even come to Mutora, uh, uh, Don and Aklite. Yes. Uh, are we ready for this? Are you guys ready? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think, I think uh, we, we, we've got enough time to traverse the constituency. And uh, going by uh, uh, the, the timeline left, mm -hmm. the truth is uh, there is no one who is ever ready for an election, just mm -hmm. like in any contest. The time is always short. But trust me, everything is ready. 
Yeah. So from the constituent, from the IEBC, you feel they are ready for All this? All the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. You're ready for this. Yeah, All sure. right, Mutiara, what do you think? Well, first allow me to congratulate my brother here. Mm -hmm. He's running for Kibra, member of parliament, and it takes a lot of courage, preparation, and even acumen to even believe that you can represent the people, especially from a constituency as vibrant as Kibra. So Anaklet, yes. congratulations for the bold move, Thank and I so wish much. you all the best. Thank you so much. Now, something else I need to say is the ground, vitally different. All it's right. not what we have always assumed. You may realize from the eloquence and fluency of my brother here that Kenya is not what it was a couple of years ago. People are aware, people are engaged, and they are not ready to be taken for granted. So when people talk about a bedroom and they are addressing a crowd in which most probably nobody has a bedroom, you must ask yourself, is that message meant for the crowd or for the constituents? The politics we see being played in Kibra today is not about Kibra. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the only people who are thinking about Kibra are the contestants. Mm -hmm. But then you look at the four governors who are paraded yesterday, or you look at the other 30 politicians from Jubilee mm -hmm. who are behind the other candidates, right. none of them is thinking about Kibra. That I can tell you. All right. They have been talking about um, water, especially Dr. Ruto. He mentioned yesterday that they have several projects like water projects and such kind of stuff. Why then say they are not of interest for the, for the residents? Because if you look at it critically, water has been a problem for Kibra since independence. Which now the former premier said that he solved. Now you see, talk is cheap. But let's face the reality. And the reality is, for instance, you look at the Jubilee Brigade. They are talking about things they have done. But like I said, on the ground, things are really different. Right. When they talk about sanitation, mm -hmm. whose responsibility is it? Who should be delivering on the water that they are mentioning? We have regulators. We have the county government. Mm -hmm. Where does an MP come in in this whole picture? It's in legislation. Have you heard them say how they are going to support the candidate to make sure that such legislation is enacted? All right. the, that's the conversation that people need mm -hmm. to have. Mm -hmm. But they're not throwing goodies, which we know will not be delivered. Because if anything, they're not even giving timelines and specific places where these will be delivered. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, let me come to you because you're on the ground, you have been with the residents and you are really working on it. Rayla Odinga comes out and says, mm -hmm. I was the Prime Minister and I did this and this and this. Uh, Dr. Ruto comes and says, now I am, the I, am, I, am, I am the Deputy President, but once you elect Mariga, this is what we'll do. What is all this about? <laughs> Thank you so much. In fact, uh, uh, I'm, 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 I'm very pleased that you asked that question. Because that is a very fundamental question on the ground, uh, not just on the ground actually. We are narrowing it down maybe to Kibra, but mm -hmm. it's the general question in the country. Mm -hmm. We look at a country in which uh, normally the, our, our, our political godfathers or the big wigs, as right. uh, they are always known, have always promised supply of air, oxygen, what not, and in, 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 in real sense, mm -hmm. nothing, nothing completely. Don't, don't forget that we are having nine stadiums to be completed in about uh, six years. months. Yeah. Six months. Yeah. Right. Uh, but trust me, more than uh, 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 30 months down the line, not even one is a half complete. So, sir. And uh, as, 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 as we talk right now, there are the talks of uh, people's bedrooms, there is when Mariga comes in, this is what he's going to do and the rest. But uh, I tend to believe that uh, we have shown a lot of, a huge uh, lot of disrespect to the people of Kibra, the constituents. We have uh, showed a lack of concern, just like he said. Because trust me, the by-election in Kibra is supposed to be about Kibra. That is what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But right now, it, trust me, it is not. It's a battle between Dr. Ruto and uh, Mushmarela. Yes, it's a battle everything. between Jew believers, uh, probably ODM and uh, the other factions. It's a battle. Like, it has become, we'll the, be the attention that. has moved from what really it is to what it is not. Okay. So, my, 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 my take is, 
there will be promises. There have always been promises. But these things are talks. They're empty talks. And that is why mm -hmm. when uh, I, you asked me about MOPA, the movement for political accountability, this just will go beyond Kibra. Because we are going to hold each and every politician, each and every public uh, uh, servant of the people, mm -hmm. that if you promised A, B, C, within a timeline, what have you done? And if you have not done much, why, we, why should we not initiate a process of your removal from office? All right. We will be discussing that and much more, especially about the coming in of the governors that join in, you know, Team Imbra. Yeah. But before then, let's ask ourselves, let me probably begin with you, Ngojiri. Will ODM manage to retain the seat? Let me first, you asked him a very good question, mm -hmm. but uh, he has been able to meander his way out and has not responded to All it right. effectively. You see, the deputy president is coming out right now and he's saying that if you elect Mariga, we are going to do this and this. Mm -hmm. In my opener, I talked about the political reality in Kibra. Let me wind, unwind it. First, the people of Kibra have been taught for a long time to resist and stay hard on the government of the day. Any time that as a government you try or as a leader you try to go to Kibra and especially a very popular word known as Sarangombe, which uh, is notoriously known for they are even resisting roads no, and, 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 and and there was a case about there was a case there was a case there was a case about a certain bypass mm -hmm. which was supposed to pass along that route you also look at cases of people being incited to uh, vandalize really. mm -hmm. and that is where i'm telling you this has been a tradition that has been projected to the people of kibra and the incitement that has been meted the people of kibra by their leaders right. and this is what is coming out now that look we have been all about playing this politics of hatred to other people because we have been incited to do so and here comes the moment when we must be able to talk with the government of the day, discuss the issues that affect us as mm -hmm. a people, if President Uhuru Kenyatta can be able to sit in one table and discuss and agree compromise with the opposition leader, who is our leader? Okay. Who are we to reject what the government of the day through the deputy president is telling us? And so this is one of the points that will sell very much for McDonald Mariga because let me tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. It is not the people of Kibra that are responsible for all the vandalization that you have been seeing there, all the resistance of government projects that you have been seeing there. It has come from the incitement. And thank God we had Ken Okod, who was working with government, and he was able to demonstrate that if you, as a leader, you work with other leaders, you work with the national government, you work with the president and everybody, yes. then it is for the benefit of the people. That is what we call leadership. But that kind of that, that, that kind of fanatic, blind resistance towards what the government is proposing yes. will not just work for the people of Kibra. That is a reality that comes to Thank you very much, Mujiri. Yes. And I want to come to you because we need to respond to that quote, to what he raised as an allegation. Yeah. It has been there, it has been all over the media yeah. that the Kibra residents, the other day, I think two, some few years ago, yeah. they demolished toilets, they demolished so much. Mm -hmm. What do you have to comment? Uh, I, I think that uh, most of that is, uh, is uh, are allegations, as, as you put it. You know, I've, I've grown up in Kibra, and uh, trust me, most of the perception that uh, outsiders have about Kibra mm -hmm. is, is, is far from uh, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right now, uh, you just talked about uh, a perceived road that was supposed to a perceived bypass. That is not correct because the road that was supposed to, to pass through Kibra connects here center and the eastern bypass, which is, and its construction is ongoing and passes through DC. If you live here just right now, just about uh, 30 minutes from where we are, pass through there. So it means that he didn't also get his, his facts right. You understand? And Sarangombe ward, which he just mentioned, is where I come from. It's my ward. It's my home ward. And it's one of, one of the most uh, uh, postmodern wards because no, no, in the past seven years, look mm -hmm. at the projects that have been running. So uh, number one, I want to encourage everyone, get to Kibra, get to the ground. There has always been uh, a lot of wrong perception 
about Kibra being violent, uh, being uh, insecure, mm -hmm. lax, ABCD, and, and uh, always tied to Raila Odinga and the rest. Trust me, in the past seven years, mm -hmm. between 2012 and, and, and until now, mm -hmm. the constituency has made huge steps the towards development. Don, Trust me. you are an, a candidate yes. for the for the call, for the legislature of the constituency. Yes. My question is: You say that they have done so much over the past seven years. Yes. What are you planning to do? When well, you get uh, I also want you to to to, to have in mind that uh, I was one of the architectures of the the, the seven years that we are, we are talking about because I worked with the Honorable Buchan in his first term. Mm -hmm. I drafted much of of, of his uh, uh, manifesto. And I walked the path with him, asking for votes. When we got to office, because mm -hmm. I was still a student, I came back to, to, to campus and let him now move on with what we did. So mine, if, if, if I'm to come in, which looks increasingly likely, mm -hmm. uh, mine is, I'm not coming into, in, into something new for me. I'm coming to push forward what we are drawn. Are you to trying to say you are In terms of education, in terms of uh, 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 water and sanitation, which is an issue in Kibra, I have to acknowledge that. And finally, on, on in terms of youth and women empowerment. Thank you very much for what you've said. Now, according to what how I'm saying it, yeah. you said that you worked with with Ken Okoth, with the, late, the yeah. former the late. Yes? yes, you worked with him for the first time. Yeah. Can we say that now you are copying his manifesto and bringing it on board? No, no. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm taking my manifesto that Ken was working on to the next level from where he left it. So you're not stealing or rather copying anything from it? No, no, no. no. Now I'm just trying to improve because, you know, times are changing. Mm -hmm. And the things we put down in 2012 mm -hmm. are not exactly what we are going to push forward. You understand? Right. Give we're, us just, uh, mm -hmm. we're just going to, 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 to make uh, the, the, the manifesto that we put down in 2012 work be service time. So, All so. right. We, we'll be coming back to you because it's quite a question of concern to the residents of Kibra. Like, you guys are coming in. What new are, ready, are you ready to offer? And we will be coming to that. L let me come back to you. There's a question that we had earlier on posted. Do you think Mariga will be able to retain, or rather not Mariga, do you think the ODM will be able to retain the seat? The Kibra by elections are too close to call. So I can tell you right now with certainty that ODM is going to retain or lose the Kibra right. seats. What we can do at this moment is interrogate what the candidates are offering. Let us forget about the national politics that's been forced on the Kibra but people. Muthiora, are we as Kenyans? Do we really care about manifesto as Kenyans? We don't, although we should. We're supposed to, but there's a big difference. Today, we know it's very easy for any cow or goat with mm -hmm. money to get into office as long as you're willing to dish it out to the people. That is something that we need to cure. If we allow for this malady to continue, the quality of representation of the people is going to keep declining. And that's how we're going to miss out on opportunities to make Kenya great. Right. Be it that ODM loses the seat. Where it said it's the former premiers in Nairobi bedroom, as we have seen all over. Actually, you shouldn't talk about bedroom. I've told you, mm -hmm. and he's from Kibra. All the people who attend those rallies, none of them has a bedroom. Sure. Mm -hmm. What they have is a bed space. How true is that? <laughs> How well, true is well, that? Well, yeah, I it's think, I the think question that you need to address also? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Kibra, you have to understand that uh, about 65% uh, mm -hmm. of uh, the constituency still lags behind in terms of uh, social development. Right. And especially when it comes to individual uh, households, the people, uh, the larger majority still live beyond, uh, b below the dollar line. That's the truth on a daily Are basis. Right. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. So uh, while that is one thing we are trying to move forward, like you said, very few people even uh, have uh, bedrooms. You look at Kibra, you can certify the, the constituency. You look at uh, Ayanya Estate, it's uh, about 50% uh, uh, middle class. You get to Jamuri, middle class again, uh, and uh, the upper side, of, 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 of that is the Kenyatta and uh, upper here. Mm -hmm. But uh, which, which, which again, unfortunately, is not the bigger uh, part of uh, the constituency. Right. You look at uh, now the epicenter of the constituency, that is uh, Gatwekera, Kianda, uh, Soweto, all the way to High Rise. Mm -hmm. That area still lives uh, way, way, way beyond being able to uh, classify the home as a bedroom to anyone. So in other words, do you have a bedroom personally? Personally? Yes, because you live with the residents of Kiba. I, 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 I don't. I don't have a bedroom too. So if you come and check, you don't have one. I, I, I don't have a bedroom. <laughs> and that's why Kibra right. people <laughs> yes. need to elect mm -hmm. one of their own. Mm -hmm. Someone who understands what the real problems are. 
for you to have, like for instance, I'm sure you're an urbanite, you live in an apartment. You know, it's not the government's role to provide a toilet for you. Why do Kibra people need for the government to provide toilets for them? Because land adjudication in Kibra has not been addressed no, since time immemorial. Which is not what even they in need. anyone's manifesto even Yes, now. what Kibra needs is someone who can go to parliament, can push institutions in that direction so that we have proper legislation mm -hmm. and approach to address the key problems. Yes. Would you, would you read, uh, like, yes. Yes. You see, we are talking about these issues here as if we don't live in this country. Of course, in our discussions, mm -hmm. we should have in mind the political reality that has been in Kibra for a long time. Some of these issues were supposed to be addressed long time ago. We have had independence since 1963. Yes. And maybe some of the issues that we are talking about Kibra today have been there for so many years. And that is why seated here today, I can authoritatively say that we need an overhaul of our leadership in right. Kibra. And that is why the people of Kibra must now be brave and be decisive to work with the government of the day. Whatever the deputy president is saying is very genuine. And of course, he, he has pointed out mm -hmm. in black that, look, Kibra cannot continue to be a place of violence, a place that has been uh, <coughs> tagged as a place of poverty. This is the time that you elect somebody who has the blood of leadership, someone who can be able to work with government, unlike some of the past leaders that have been in Kibra. For example, the former prime minister, who mm -hmm. was a prime minister, by the yes. way, and we are still talking about the same issues today. He was the MP of that area. So now, this is the time for the people of Kibra to make a bold decision, whereby if they elect my friend Don, and I wish him all the best, I, I have all the best regards for him, mm -hmm. whether it is McDonald Mariga, let the person who is going to be elected and the deputy president has promised, because it is the government's uh, agenda, to make sure that all the parts of this country mm -hmm. are developed. That they are going to work very closely with the people of Kibra, unlike some of the leaders that are being incited against the government and being told, no, look at the other side. Just. These guys do not belong to our party. That is not the politics that the people of Kibra would want. And so whether or not ODM would retain or uh, lose that seat is uh, something that we are going to wait for. But I foresee a very drastic change. Of course, several factors being considered, some of which I've given you. All right, which is OK. Let me come back to, to, to Don. Yes. Uh, Unlike before, the poll has attracted a nationwide interest. We have never seen this before, a by-election of just a constituency attracting a nationwide interest. And now we are left with just two big fish. So I can call them. We have Dr. Ruto, who is in Jubilee, as we can say. And of course, we have the opposition leader. So I can say opposition leader, as it is now even with a handshake. Where do we stand in terms of Kibra and the nation? Uh, thank you so much. I think that uh, to begin with, Kibra has attracted a lot of uh, uh, interest, not mm -hmm. just within uh, the, the confines of the nation. We've seen a lot of uh, uh, other stakeholders away from the country that are really looking in. Uh, this points to one thing, to, to two things I mean. Number one, this points to the fact that our democracy is now very mature. You understand? All right. Because uh, it, it, the, the, the perception that uh, uh, Kibra was an ODM zone has quickly changed and, uh, and, and, and has really, 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 uh, it's no longer the old thing. If it were, you wouldn't be seeing the tension we're having down there. Uh, another perspective into which uh, the, the reasoning being, there has always been a perception that Kibra uh, is a place of violence, it's a place of less or no development, it's a place where you cannot uh, push any positive agenda. But uh, as we talk right now, 
and as uh, anything can 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 predict the same mm -hmm. over the past seven years until uh, today a lot has moved forward with regards to kibra and every other kenyan really want to know that uh, the, the groundwork that has been laid in kibra who is taking the mantle to move it next and whoever is coming in okay how best can he because the, the, the shoes that have been left by Honorable Ken, of course, the late right. is bigger than 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 than, than the, the, the the hot air of uh, Dr. Ruto, nor the 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 the, 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 the promises of, uh, of Honorable Raila Odinga. That's the truth. Uh, right, and I want to come to you, Muthiora. We, we are now left with the mantle battle, the question of 2022. It's like now we are we are not focusing on the Kibra by election. Now we are looking at 2022 in relation to these two big fish. What's your take on this? Well, you're right when you say that and it's really wrong for us to take that kind of an approach because at the end of the day, we're trying to replace Ken Okoth, the late, the former MP for Kibra. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening in Kibra right now. Now, there are things we cannot ignore and that is when young people voice their support for some people, and I would say in this case, the Jubilee government. This is a government that gave very lofty promises to Kenyans. They went out there and borrowed a lot of money, mm -hmm. actually more than tripled our national debt. And yet most of the promises they made to Kenyans remain unkept to date. I cannot fault them for the development that we see in Kibra. They've done that. Mm -hmm. Let's give credit where it's due. A lot of credit, of course, goes to the former MP because he was able to work with the government and embrace the government so they would bring development to Kibra. But then the direct promises being made to the Kibra people by Jubilee, we should take those with a pinch of salt mm -hmm. because in Kibra, the only official space I know is Woodley Stadium, mm -hmm. where if they really meant well, the over one million people who live in Kibra deserve a stadium. The Jubilee government should have promised to deliver a stadium there. All right, all right, all right. Muthira, because for the interest of time, uh, there's a question I'd like us to, to tackle, and probably can begin with Ngojiri. We have seen several governors, yes. among them Charity Ngilu, mm -hmm. you know, and we have seen them join the ODM, the ODM League. Is it? Are we really not now caring about the handshake or we are rather focusing on 2022? Yes, first of all, it is delusional to think that uh, somebody like Anwe Guru would move all the way from Kirenyaga to Kibra and even transform more than five votes. That is uh, we not in this world. <laughs> why, why would you and, think so? Uh, of course, we know her history. And we also question the integrity of some of these leaders, like the right honorable Raila Odinga, somebody who will be the first to accuse Anwe Guru of massive corruption, and yet right now is asking for help from her. I I don't I'm not able to get yeah. that consistency from Raila Odinga. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are questions and the deputy president was in a comical way trying to drive that point that look somebody is getting assistance in a bedroom whereas we know matters of the bedroom are more of private things of course that is a, a political satire which mm -hmm. a statement that is mm -hmm. meant to ridicule their opponents and maybe sometimes for the sake of the gallery and uh, is, the talks is, is it the works in a way. But, then, but then let us talk about politics of alignment and how the people of Kibra are supposed to be ac assessing the candidates. It's not about the number of people that are going to, the tourists right. that are going to come to Kibra. The tour. Yes, and try to promise the people of Kibra this and this and this because they don't understand the issues that the, pe the people of Kibra face. Right. Of course, in a mean of... Uh, the deputy president, mm -hmm. he's the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya, and he has a stake in Kibra. And so he's justified to go to Kibra and, as a government, give such promises 
it will be correct for the president also to go to Kibra. But when we see... Which we have not been saying. Yes, yes, he should have. But when we see somebody like uh, the right honorable Burelo Odinga getting Kifutha Kibwana from Makueni, so how does uh, Makueni and Kibra relate? Mm -hmm. So this is just a way of uh, trying to capitalize on uh, the tribal politics and uh, make right. sure that they are able to get that, uh, that, that bonga. But then, remember... Mm -hmm. If we are consistent as a country and looking at the 2017 general elections, the reality in Kibra was that, look, it is Raila Odinga who controls this space. But now, after the handshake, mm -hmm. and you correctly put it, whether it's jeopardizing the handshake or not, that has nothing to do with the handshake. Because what is the role of uh, the handshake? The handshake was supposed to bring peaceful coexistence of the people. Yes. And in fact, it was supposed to bring a fantastic mm -hmm. atmosphere for the people of Kenya to be able to converse. It was never meant to shelve competitive politics. Mm -hmm. So that was never a point of the handshake. All right. Yes. Gujiri, as we wind up, let me come to Muthiora. Is the absence of uh, Kalonzo Musioka giving a leeway to, to anyone in, in this particular sphere? I don't think so, because Kalonzo Musioka was second in command in the NASA structure. Which is the position. And we know NASA collapsed. The center stopped holding a long time mm -hmm. ago. We've seen the emergence of the Kamba leaders, and surprisingly, all the three of them, the three governors, mm -hmm. were in Kibra. They have neutralized the effect of Kalonzo Musioka. Right. And one thing we know about him is sometimes he doesn't like to reveal his cards mm -hmm. because he seems sensual sometimes. And when that's the case, he pulls back. Now, the question we should be asking ourselves is what value does he add in the national picture? Right. And to me, mm -hmm. at the moment, I don't think he has a lot of clout. Times have changed. And if he doesn't change tact, then Kenyans should put him where he belongs. And that is in oblivion. He did his time. Let the new generation mm -hmm. take charge. And with that, I also just want to outline mm -hmm. one thing. The young people should look at the line outs in Kibra. We've seen the people behind Ken Okoth. They are a little seasoned, a little aged. Mm -hmm. Look at those behind Mariga. Yes, we have a problem with him having never participated in a political process. But then they are youthful, which means the young people in Kenya should believe in themselves. Let's believe right. in the power of our vote. Mm -hmm. It can make all the change. If we choose to stand behind a yes, candidate right. like Don Anaklet here, we have the power to make Thanks the change that Kenya Mithura. needs. In 30 seconds, for the, because of the interest of time, mm -hmm. is Raila Odinga in fear of losing the by-election? I'll, uh, first, uh, thank you so much for, for that question. But uh, allow me brush over the two other things that you've talked about. Mm -hmm. First, uh, the appearance of the, the governors in Kibra. It is both good and bad. One of them is that uh, we are uh, showing up a united front and that we think that the nation and Kibra as a constituency is going to move forward beyond this right. by-election. But on the other hand, mm -hmm. it shows that uh, ODM and Honorable Raila as such is very fearful and looks increasingly likely that they are going to lose all. Uh, the constituency in terms of ODM. And uh, number two, on Kalonzo not showing up on the political fear the other day, I think it looks increasingly likely that Kalonzo is losing his mantle in Ukambani. Time will prove me wrong or right, but uh, beyond next week, I think we'll still be seated on this and we'll someone will... We'll be looking even will, at Ukambani politics yeah, because yeah, it's a question yeah, right now of concern. Yeah. So uh, you'll, you'll, you'll agree with me that mm -hmm. uh, uh, as things go, a lot is really happening behind the scenes in terms of political alignment. And as I see things, unless uh, Kalonzo steps forward and decides to stand with the one Dr. Ruto, he has got no political future in this country. Right. I'm sorry to say that. Is Raila living in fear? Yes or no? I think yes. He is. Yes. Yes. All right. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. We get to call it a day for the time. Unfortunately, we may not be giving you the parting shot because of time. Yeah. But don't forget, Val is coming up in just a few. Don't go anywhere. My name is Karanja Alex. Thanks so very much. It's always a pleasure to have you join us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks so very much, gentlemen, for coming.